Women Podcast with your host here, Taylor Hart from Respect My Region. And today I'm super excited to sit down and talk with Tracy Rice. She has told me that this is her first phone interview, video interview over the interwebs that we are doing right now. So I'm super hyped to be able to talk to her about her wonderful little golden sanctuary, or should we say green sanctuary, um, out in the foothills in Monroe. Uh, your wonderful mountain views tree house joint I am super excited (laughs) to talk with you thank you so much for joining me today it is uh been a wonderful North American weed tour for us so far at Respect My Region, and we've talked to a lot of different people, a lot of growers. I've talked to a lot of women, you know, in the retail side of things, a lot of women that have grown a lot of businesses. So I'm really excited to talk to you about more of the hospitality and the consumption lounge kind of, or not even lounge really, but treehouse <laughs> um, mm-hmm. in this case, but that kind of side of the industry. Um, so I like to start off these interviews by really um, just getting a feel um, for the relationship that you have with the plant and like what your consumption habits have been over the year and kind of like that kind of a thing. Um, So yeah, what is your relationship with the plant? Um, It's a... (laughs) It's a great relationship. We've been together for 28 years. Um, she's always been there for me through all my bullshit. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, I was actually just recently doing a marijuana experience with a couple of my guests, and um, we did the math on exactly how long I had been smoking, and it was 28 years, which was seven years longer than they had been alive. So <laughs> I, was, I was like, not to make you feel old, um, I am 28 years old. So you started smoking when I was born. So when I say things like, I've been smoking since you were born, Missy, it's true. Literally. (laughs) But yeah, I'm that old. But I just love weed. Honestly, the first time I smoked weed, I was 17 years old. And uh, if you do the math, you'll figure out how old I am. But let's just not do the math. Um, And I used to have really horrible problems with passing out. I would be in high school and I'd pass out at... Um, an amusement park. I passed out in a Burger King parking lot or a a line. I passed out at this meeting I was at. Like I passed out five or six different times before my mom dragged me to a doctor. She's on drugs. Test her for drugs. And at that point I had not even tried any drugs, but she kind of forced me into drugs because she just kept accusing me of being on drugs. But the second I smoked weed, I never passed out again. And I didn't find out until college that that was panic disorder. I was having panic attacks so bad that I was passing out. But once I started smoking weed at 17 years old, I have never passed out from anxiety or panic ever again. So that's why I love it. So I don't have to, you know, freak out and get nervous and I just chill with weed. (laughs) Yeah, I can absolutely relate to that. I have had some pretty severe panic attacks. Um, And I'm sad to say that I think it was because of a bad mushroom trip when I was younger that I developed a lot of anxiety. Um, And since then, I've been trying to use weed and shrooms to honestly (laughs) reduce that anxiety again. Um, And so I can totally relate because I feel like um, when I get into those moments, I haven't ever passed out from a panic attack, um, but I've gotten really close and I've definitely like gotten really lightheaded and I've gotten like close to that point. Um, So that's absolutely scary um, to think about, um, but I'm so glad that weed has helped you uh, to kind of calm down from that and be able to manage it because who wants to go through life passing out because you're, you know, nervous or anxious or, you know, that's, that does not sound like fun. It wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) So what led you then to become, uh, like be a part of the industry instead of just a consumer? So back in college, I used to do, um, marijuana math, we'll call it. Um, So I learned right off the bat that, you know, this is a life changing for me and this is what I want to do. So um, uh, basically the very first professional thing I ever did in the industry was open my own medical marijuana dispensary. I owned, operated and sold it myself. 
So that was pretty fun. <laughs> yes. How was that process of getting it started in Colorado? Was it an easy it, process? Um, 12 years ago, I would say yes. Yeah. Um, nowadays, I would have to say no. And honestly, I probably should never have left Colorado. Mm -hmm. You know, if I wanted to be successful, I, I yeah. wouldn't choose to have my business in this state. <laughs> I, it's, just, it's a very hard state to run a business and operate a business. And, you know, yes. it's a very hard state. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> I've been having many discussions with people about this as of lately. Um, and also how far behind our state is with a yep. lot of things, even though we were one of the initial ones to legalize. Um, we are stuck in that time period. And right. it's... Mm -hmm. it's disheartening really is what it is um it's sad that we don't have lounges it's sad that we don't have tours it's sad that we don't have any open consumption it's sad that there's no real community in washington because of all those stupid rules nobody wants to get in trouble nobody wants to put their entire life savings on the line for a party you know like it's yeah. just really sad we're getting passed by our you know cannabis dollars are getting passed by they're getting sent to vegas and yeah. you know colorado but no yeah. way i mean if they're coming to my place they're definitely coming to washington but yeah. um nobody is coming to washington you know for yeah. tourism anymore because they're not making it easy unfortunately right. yeah i uh, i still bud tend <laughs> And so I talk to a lot of these tourists and a lot of these people who are coming in from out of town and trying to consume and they're asking me about all of these products or all of these, you know, lounges that are in California and, you know, Vegas, I believe just uh, yep. okay. Like today, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like they're going to like having a lounge in Vegas, like it's just going to be so massive, but they're yeah. like, well, where can I go to smoke? And I was like, Nowhere. Legally, Washington yeah, State you doesn't allow personally you. legally cannot smoke anywhere in mm -hmm. Washington State. I legally cannot smoke anywhere. I can't, I legally cannot smoke in my home here. Um, I, I I'm do. like, as I smoke in my home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, um, I might break my lease. Don't uh, evict me, please. But, um, you know, it, legally, like, there is no places for residents. There's no places for tourists. You know, you cannot smoke pretty much anywhere in the state. And, and it that's is... why I have to word it very carefully. Yes. I am a lodging facility that is marijuana friendly and yeah. gay friendly and they friendly yeah. and that's how i have to word it otherwise the state comes after me like they have <laughs> which is so frustrating because like in essence you are doing like you're in such a like a such a secluded okay so i i went to high school in monroe <laughs> very oh, nice. familiar <laughs> very familiar with that area um and you're almost actually out like more towards like sultan oh, area yeah, exactly. so really in the yeah. mountains <laughs> mm -hmm. um and and like it is so secluded from everything and like properties out there, like when you're on those properties, it's beautiful. There's so much nature around you and it, and it is, it feels so much safer being high out there and being able to just kind of be calm and chill without, you know, everything that the city has with it. Cause being high in the city sometimes is overwhelming and you get paranoid and freaked out. Like I've had mm -hmm. a few moments where I was way too high downtown in the middle of like the transit area. And I was like, <laughs> I smoked some tangy and I was like, I was <laughs> out of this world. And I was like, Oh boy, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta keep moving. I gotta get mm -hmm. out of here because it was overwhelming. But like it, what you've created out there is such like a sanctuary that you would think that legally like it would be okay and yet washington still hasn't made it to that point to where it's like a okay thing which is just right. so baffling to me um so i commend you and everything that you do because creating a, a place where even non-consumers can go and, and dip their toes into that kind of culture is um is it's a beautiful thing 
how um, did you even come up with this idea and create this kind of environment? So really, I just like cool places to smoke weed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> and I don't Check. really like to leave the house. <laughs> so if I can make the house a cool place to smoke weed and I don't really have to leave a lot, then I have totally succeeded. Um, basically, I sold my medical marijuana dispensary after I owned it for six and a half months. And I made a bunch of money and then I took some time off. Also in that time off that I took, my marriage was falling apart and I needed to come up with an idea. Um, so I knew I needed to work with what I already had. I already had a house. I already had animals. So I already had weed, a love for weed. So yeah. I just needed to figure something out with stuff I already had. Um, yeah. And I needed to figure it out fast. So I started it off on Airbnb. I started with, you know, just two rooms in the house. And then I got some gypsy wagons off of Craigslist and I got this insane double bubble from China. That was a big disaster. The bubble ended up at the dump. Um, the gypsy <laughs> wagons I ended up selling to a guest. She fell in love with them, but she wasn't able to look at them when she was here because yeah. they were both booked and she was gonna start the same exact business I was doing, but she was actually gonna serve breakfast. Um, so I ended up selling them to her because I knew I was getting a tree house. I actually had another tiny house here for a little while, but I didn't own that tiny house. Somebody else owned the tiny house and she didn't want people smoking weed in the tiny house. So I kicked her out because go park it somewhere normal then because we're not parking at the <laughs> Place and not having some people smoke weed in it. No, get yeah. out of here. So I took her out and then so basically the wagons didn't work out, the bubble didn't work out. The tiny house could have worked out um with a different owner if I owned it myself. Right. Yeah. So once I got my first tree house, you know, it was all over. I literally, and that's not even a joke, I could actually use the word literally, um, got another tree house one month from the time I got my first tree house. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, the hashtag was a very planned tree house. Like I knew I was getting that in January, January, February, March, April, May. I prepared for it. You know, yeah. I got it in May. It was ready in June. Okay. Well, then my other friends, like, you need to meet Sunray Kelly. I'll take you up there. So she brought me up there. I meet Sunray. I'm like, holy shit, this guy needs to build my next tree house. I didn't even know I was getting a next tree house, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so Serendipity. I'm like, wait, what? So I yeah. just got a tree house. I'm riding the fucking treehouse high, literally. And the next thing you know, I meet Sunray and I'm going in another treehouse. And it's not even like days later. I'm still riding. The paint is not even dry. I'm not even kidding about that. Paint is not even dry on treehouse number one. And I'm up in Cedro Woolley trying to convince Sunray to build me my next treehouse. And meanwhile, I'm like, the fuck? So it just happened very quickly. I got one treehouse and then less than a month later i had the pot leaf so i call the pot leaf tree house my unplanned tree house um because yes. people have unplanned babies all the time i can right. have an unplanned tree house yes you can <laughs> i love that <laughs> that's, that's so interesting that. and then exactly one year from the time that i got the hashtag i got the 420. so i got the hashtag the pot leaf and the 420 all within one year calendar year. wow yeah, wow. I was a little obsessive, and I kind of just riding that high. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's one of the best addictions, though, when you find something that it, it feels like it just works so perfectly, you know. And then you just have to expand, and you're just like, let's go and dive, jump, whatever, straight into it, you know. That is. That's what uh, I did. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so interesting, though, that it was a couple of other like iterations before it turned into the tree houses. Oh, yeah. It started off with just rooms and then, but it really wasn't working. Nothing was working. Like it wasn't drawing people here. It wasn't covering the mortgage. It wasn't covering, it wasn't paying for the things that I needed to. It was still just like a part time thing. And I probably should have still had another job, but I was very focused on making this work. Yeah. And then, you know, like a bunch of things happened and I basically had to rebuild it from the ground up twice. And then I just started doing it on my own. I don't do, don't list with third party people anymore. No Airbnb, no, um, nobody else. I just list it on my own website. Yeah. And that's, you know, I could be a lot busier if I listed it with other people, but I wouldn't have the people that I wanted here. And that's super right. important for me to have 
the niche of people that I want here, which is stoners that like animals in tree houses. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> like those are my people. <laughs> yeah. And I think That's- it's so important to have that kind of environment and that vibe to it, you know? And I think then when it's- I owned a store, like a medical yeah. marijuana store, what I really missed was like trying it with people like hey you know you do it this way or here you try it this way and here i can do that with people like i can give them you know their first dab like that's super fun when i get to do that for people (laughs) but i couldn't do that when i owned a store (laughs) right yeah stupid laws man stupid laws but having a, a host that is just so gracious and and wants to meet and interact and connect with people and through the plant, which we've always, I mean, our community has always talked about the plant as such a connecting thing and bringing people together. And so to provide that atmosphere and whatnot is so beautiful to me. Um, and especially out somewhere out there um, in Monroe, it's, it really is. I still go out there all the time to reconnect and be a part of it. Um, and I saw that you have one on the river now too. Yeah, it's currently, um, it was evacuated for the last two weeks. Um, it just was opened again on Sunday. Yeah. The evacuation, um, the road is closed like four miles past the river joint currently. So I have been trying to encourage people to, you know, reschedule um, just because yeah. it's so smoky up there. But I also need them to keep booking because I am. So. Right. So it's kind of this fine line that I'm always walking like, oh, am I going to happy to reschedule you? But yeah. please don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that because the mm-hmm. fires did get so, they did come so much further into the mountains past the east side this time around yeah, they were literally across the street from my house i had at one point they cut the power because i have a bunch of cameras around the house so i can watch and i can right. see the smoke from the mountains behind my house um there's this one guy on instagram that one of my followers sent to my house to take pictures of because they cut the power and I couldn't watch the cameras anymore. So I was getting really nervous. And this mm-hmm. random guy just went to my house and took a bunch of p- videos and pictures and sent it and uploaded it for me. I sent him some money via Venmo, like, thanks, bro. Yeah. But after yeah. I saw that, it made me feel so much better because there were literally firemen to the left of my house or firemen to the right of my house. And the um, railroad was spraying the bridge behind my house. So awesome. and then I have the river in the front. So all sides were like protected after i saw that, that i was like so okay but it is so close i've never yeah. been that close to a fire before and it's scary. it's scary and the whole thing that i have an incinerating toilet in my rental i think it's going to be a really hard sell after the fire <laughs> <laughs> so i'm kind of but- i'm like pretty worried already that people are going to have trauma from the fire and they're not going to want my like toilet that blows up their shit or burns their shit up <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the fires will bring a little bit of more awareness to these things um, because I think incinerating it is a, be- a lot better way to go about it, you know? Way Spending better. The time out there, I, um, I have my fair share of experience with those kind of, you know, less than um, five star kind of bathroom situations. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so much better than just having, you know, a lot of that stuff lingering around. Um, but right. also what people don't understand is like when you when you go out camping and stuff and, and if that toilet paper or anything is just kind of lingering around for a while and you don't take smell. care of it well, that can help contribute to these fires right. as well, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and pollution and, you know, just leaving your stuff everywhere. So uh, I think this might be a time for people to get a little bit more knowledgeable and be aware of these th- things um, because mm-hmm. I think it's it's a better way to live life going through thinking about these things so um i'm glad your property is safe because that is super scary um, yeah, my mom still lives out there and she said that the smoke was bad out there um so yeah. I, i'm glad to hear your properties are safe because that is uh really close to home <laughs> and that is really literally yeah really scary. it's scary i've never mm-hmm. been that close even when i lived in colorado i was never that close to a fire but yeah. um to be i actually had guests friday night and they left by 10 o'clock and the road was already 
think it was closed or closing right around that time. I think it was maybe around 11 o'clock it was closing. And I'm still texting my guests like Saturday saying, hey, they just closed the road. Let me know if you want to reschedule. If not, see you at two. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, yeah. an hour later, I have to send them a message like, oh, um, no, the sheriff actually asked us to leave. The, the, we yeah. had to be evacuated. And I don't know when I'm coming back. And I don't know when I'm going to schedule you back. Oh so yeah, that was interesting. I was like, I didn't even know what the hell was happening when I woke up in the morning and then it happened so quickly yeah. from the fire started to you're being evacuated like wasn't even able to grab oh anything gosh. so that was scary and so now you have um quite the plethora of animals as well <laughs> i um, do um i have how... 15 animals currently yeah um the ones that live inside there's three dogs a cat i just saw him somewhere a cat a <laughs> parrot and a pig and then yeah. um i have the pandemic seven which are the two fainting goats two baby doll sheep the two alpacas and a livestock guardian dog i got all of those animals yes. during the pandemic yeah. um the baby doll or the the fainting goats were the beginning of it. Um, I named them Homie and Roni for the stay at home orders and Corona. Yes. And they're the beginning of the pandemic seven. And then I got Alpaca Bong and Alpaca Dab. And I brought them <laughs> home in my RAV4 on a ferry. And that was interesting because they're just alpacas yeah. sitting in the back of a car on a ferry. And of course, it like brought so much attention, but I loved it because they were so funny. They look so cute. I and love then alpacas. I got Flower Pot and Mary Jane, they're my two baby doll sheep. Um, oh. Flower Pot is the sweetest animal on the entire farm. She's so sweet. She's my favorite. I love her so much. Um, Mary Jane's kind of a bench, but she's, you know, she just doesn't want you to touch her, which is fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I also offer the animal experience. So if people want to get up close and personal with animals, they can, you know, add the animal experience to their stay. So then they get to feed them. And sometimes I'll let them out too and just let them roam and fine. do whatever. Also, there's a goat hike I do with guests too. I take them in the middle of the woods and bring the goat goats and it's super fun and we just go until the goats look like they're gonna die and then we turn around <laughs> yeah, they really they love it actually they really love it goats are fun i love yeah. goats too i spend a lot of time around goats and alpacas so yeah. i am like I, i'm loving this so much uh, uh how was it with them during the the smoke and the fires like how has that been Oh, everyone oh, kept thinking that like I was evacuated at the tree houses. So I kept having to let people know like the tree houses and the river joint are 30 minutes away from each other. Tree houses are fine. Okay. Animals are fine. Rivers not fine. Okay. No animals live at the river. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I know like in my panic, I was just not making sense at all because it was just happening so quickly. Um, yeah. But the animals were fine for the most part, except for those, you know, really shitty smoky days. I was just, yeah. you know, really worried yeah. about them breathing it in. Probably sure. the animal I have to worry about the most when it comes to smoke is my bird. Um, yeah. You know, he's the most sensitive of, of all of them. So, yeah, you know, he's he's uh, he's also really bad, and he loves to talk about marijuana too. He's like, what does mommy love? love? Mommy loves marijuana. And like, my marijuana. He says, it's like, everybody, where's my marijuana? And everyone just dies laughing. It's so funny. Like he'll wait until people are laughing, talking, smoking, whatever, and then they'll be silent. Where's my marijuana? And then everybody loses it. He loves it. That's his favorite thing to do to people. <laughs> He's a little stand up. <laughs> he goes, Wait, what did he just say? I'm like, exactly what you thought he said. <laughs> yes, he did. That is so freaking amazing. Uh, so you have. Yeah, Homie and Roni are really funny. They love weed. They will straight up steal a lit joint out of your hand if you're not watching them. Like, if you're smoking joint, you just put, put it down on the side. No, don't do that. They'll steal it. A lit joint out of your hand. That's how bad they are. Hey. Uh, I mean, I get pretty mad if somebody takes my joint, but if an animal's going to come up and take my joint, I think I might let them. Yeah, and he eats it and he loves it. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. you know, I'm not going to yell at him. I never really yell at him. I just laugh every single time. So that's probably why he still continues to do it. But probably, but <laughs> adorable nonetheless. I can only imagine. That's how it's cute as shit. I would be down for that. Like, come up and try and take my join for me we might just have that little <laughs> smoke sesh <laughs> that is super cute it. though uh, so you have like what four tree houses on the property now yeah the hashtag tree house the pot leaf tree house the 420 tree house and the trippy tree house and then i just added the river joint which is 30 minutes away yeah so 
So out of those, um, do you, you have like little uh, themes for them or do you have like, any, any tips for people when they go, like which ones to stay at to get like a certain type of vibe that they're looking for? Well, the Trippy Tree House is definitely the biggest one. And if you're tall, you'll probably want to get that, that one because that's probably the only one you'll be able to stand up in besides the 420. The 20 has a lot of stand up room. Yeah. I'm only five foot two. My first two tree houses were literally custom made for me where they had me stand, measure, and that's I fit underneath the lofts perfectly. <laughs> Unfortunately, I realized not everybody's five foot two. So the other two tree houses were built for tall people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say like the trippy or the pot leaf if you're celebrating something the trippy is really it's more spacious it's bigger it has a sink in there and a refrigerator the pot leaf is definitely magical and fairy like a lot of people use that one if they're like just got married if it's their honeymoon actually I have somebody on their honeymoon right now um oh. also you know it's a lot of girls come together you know girl gang female friends that yeah. you know that's fun too um, the 420 is really good if you like to be close to the animals. It's, it's the one closest to the animal. It's also the one that opens up, so yeah. you can actually open it up and talk to the animals all day long. Um, but yeah, and the River Joy is very private. I always tell people it's not the quietest location because of the highway, the train, the river, and the creek, but it's very private. You're not going to see another human, and you can be as loud as you want there, too, and nobody's going to care, so that's the best part. Yeah. And once you're there for a little while, like, the train just became, like, second, like, background noise, basically. When right. I lived out there, like, you get used to it pretty quickly, honestly, mm -hmm. especially with the highway next to it. I'm sure it's pretty easy, especially when you're looking at, at the water and you're surrounded by everything. Um, exactly. I have, I, have, I have so many great memories on that river out there. I mean, driving out to Sultan and floating down from Sultan to Monroe, so... Um, um, I love I, that float. I, That's like my favorite float. <laughs> it is so much fun. So I would, I, I need to, and this is something that I've wanted. I wanted to book, a, you know, like a retreat and to come out and stay out there. And I just haven't been able to find the time or the right opportunity to do it. So now that you have the river joint open, that speaks to my heart and soul so much. And so I'm going to have to make my way out now because that is literally like so much of my childhood and I spent so many times as a teenager too just smoking weed by the river and mm -hmm. that's my favorite really, place to smoke weed yeah <laughs> and really coming into who I was and everything so um I highly recommend everybody to, to book uh and and go and stay out there especially if you've never been out there um in that area because it, it really is truly beautiful um yeah, I love it out here. It's gorgeous. You're far away, but you're still like close to things, you know? Right. Yes. You still can get to <laughs> society. That's like Monroe's like the last big, big town before you go into the mountains. And then it get, proceeds to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller mm -hmm. as you go through until you get over the mountains. Right, um, exactly. But it, it, it is close to where you feel like you can still touch civilization and escape from it all in the same um, lots of hiking around there, too. Um, you guys have to be right next to a bunch of good stuff. Um, I know Wallace Falls is right out there. Yeah, um, Wallace Falls, Lake Serene, um, Barclay Creek is right by oh, yes. um, the River Joint. Um, some of those are actually closed right now because of the fires. Right, um, yeah. Because they don't want people that close. But, yeah, hopefully the fire season doesn't affect the rental season too much but we'll see let's hope not let's yeah. also hope that the fire season comes to a close really mm -hmm. quickly really soon mm -hmm. here i'm really hoping so although the weather is still bright and sunny and hot and i don't know if we actually live in washington anymore at this point because <laughs> i feel like we're in a whole nother whole nother universe this is not the washington that i'm used to um so it's it's interesting um but i I hope for your sake that it, it comes to a close real soon um, so that it can be a little bit more comfortable out there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to be mad when it starts raining. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> At least the first week. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I love the rain and being in the trees in the rain sounds magical to me, especially mm -hmm. stoned. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, so I want to wrap things up here just really quick with a little bit of um, insight into, 
to the magic uh, that Sunray Kelly brought into it. Um, um, because I know that um, Sunray Kelly just has like a, a cool energy and vibe. So I, I kind of just wanted to hear the story of meeting him and then collaborating with him or letting him do it thing however it went i just want to kind of hear about that process of, of building out the tree houses you talked about how quickly it happened um but mm-hmm. like I, I just want to hear some of the energy that went into it and, and just that relationship that you've had with him um so basically my friend adele introduced me to him and then we went up there and that day i asked him if he was for hire and he said yes so i was like okay cool um and then within like two days he and bonnie came down to my house which is like an hour and a half away and they were taking measurements under uh-huh. you know under my trees for a potential tree house and then i told him that i wanted it to look like a pot leaf from above and it needed to sleep four people and actually hang on <laughs> I'm like I think I have Ooh, what do we have what do we have I, 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 do, love this. I do I do I have the original sunray drawings oh of my the tree house. god <laughs> this is literally on my letterhead I told him I wanted it to be a pot leaf on top and he ended up drawing drawing that he drew like that um, that is so cool. Yeah, so that's kind of like how the roof looks like from the top. Yeah, and then like I had to give him money because I just gave him a bunch of money, and Bonnie's like, "Um, we should write this down." <laughs> <laughs> so then that was this. This is a, a you know the receipt. <laughs> that is amazing. So yeah. Oh, Very it was, it's so easy to work with Sunray as long as you're. You um, don't care that he's barefoot, <laughs> but he's so easy to work with. Like I literally just tell him, "Hey, I need it to sleep four people. I need it to look like a pot leaf." I think those were the only two things I really told him, yeah. and he just brought everything. You know, he did the rest. He painted. He did the colors. He did everything. Um, and then so for cool. the trippy tree house, I kind of told him the same thing. I'm gonna. I I had already named it the trippy tree house before. Because yeah. obviously I want people to know, like, what to expect when they get here. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of, like, blind booking the pot to leave treehouse, like I had one family do. And then they're like, it smells like marijuana. Huh? Well, that's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyways, I, 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 uh, I went off subject again. But um, the pot leaf treehouse, all of the wood from the pot leaf treehouse, the wood on the outside, the wood on the inside, that all came from trees on Sunray's property that he was born and raised on. So it's like 500-year-old oh. cedar and he brought all of that here to my property and then everything that you see on the pot leaf like all around it the railings around it and the steps on the inside yeah. that all came from the cedar trees right across from the pot leaf tree house so half of the wood came from sunrise place and the other half of the wood came from my place and that's why i feel like the pot leaf is so magical yeah. compared to all the other ones because it's like both of us were mixed into that one and that's why it's my favorite that is so cool. <laughs> but it's really easy wow. to work with Sunray. I want to like him to build me another one, but I know I can't right now. So yeah. Well, this was my next question. Um, is do you have any dreams or hopes or, or thoughts of expanding into maybe another state or you know? I do. I'm. I mean, I do. I definitely want yeah. to expand. I want to you know, have more locations. I have a few things to figure out at this location. I have a few things to work out that I'm working through. Um, But I, you know, it's been super fun the last nine years of doing this and opening my house to complete strangers. It's been really fun and it helps that they're all stoned. So that's also the best part about my job. So (laughs) I'm sorry, I don't even know if I answered your question. I think that Les Vaughn had did me in. I think you did. You definitely okay, did. Sorry. I can understand that there's still some things to work out, but even just the the idea of, you know, expanding out and, and having this whole basically like network of tree houses um, all over the place would be, I mean, would be glorious. It would be so cool. And I'm so here for it and would support <laughs> you in that a thousand percent. Um, Yay. So one day it will happen, I feel. So I'm going to manifest that for you right now. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Because I think that would be wonderful. Yeah. 
Uh, it's been lovely chatting with you today. Uh, thank you for joining me so much again. Um, and I just want to open the floor for you if you have any last minute thoughts or anything that you want to leave the people with. Um, or you can just point them to your website to go book a reservation. <laughs> Yeah, my website, amusebb.com. Um, I actually have a 25% discount code for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Bolt Creek Fire, all caps, 25% off lodging at both locations, Treehouse Joint and the River Joint. And that's good until December 31st, including holidays. Hi. Yay. Hello. <laughs> Yay. Again, thank you. Uh, yeah, sincerely, thank you so much. Um, and I will let you get back to all your wonderful pets and dogs <laughs> being on the floor. Oh my God, I can't believe that happens. Like, I'm literally watching it on the camera. Like, okay. Classic <laughs> moment, though, I swear. They That's have their hilarious. own personalities, and they know when you don't want them to do something, and they will do it. <laughs> right. So, again, I appreciate you. I encourage all of our listeners, everybody who views it, to go check out the treehouse. Is book yourself a, a lovely getaway there um, and, and consume to your heart's des desire because Yay. all we want to ever, ever do in life is just be happy and stoned. I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. not you, me but me. That's literally all I want in life. <laughs> you know, Tracy does. So be happy, be stoned, and uh, tune in next week for another episode of the Higher Women Podcast. Follow Respect for Region, subscribe to our YouTube, all that jazz. Um, but other than that, um, go enjoy the sunshine in this beautiful day and uh, uh, I hope we can connect in the future for sure thank you yeah bye everybody